Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Midlife Mojo Moment. I'm here with one of my old, not old in years, but old in number of years I've known friend, Melissa Jacoby. We actually double dated to a the senior prom together. And I'm really excited to have her here today because it was actually intermittent fasting, which brought us back together after almost 20 years of not really connecting all that much. Um, and so I'm really excited to have Melissa here today. She has a, a wonderful story um, of her intermittent fasting journey. And I'm just happy to have you here. And Melissa, you started with my, my I Melt the Midlife Middle program back in January. Is that correct? It is. Yep. January. Awesome. Awesome. And so what, uh, what made you sort of just want to join the program in the first place? So at the end of last summer, I found that my weight had ballooned uh, quite a bit. I'm a pretty small framed woman. I stand a tall 5'3", and all of a sudden my weight was approaching kind of my post-pregnancy weight, which was crazy because I haven't had children for 13 years. And so... Um, I was really frustrated. I had buttoned down things through the fall and, and tried to lose the weight on my own. I did an online program. I was a Weight Watchers believer my entire life. It wasn't working for me. Um, I lost like three pounds in four months and I went away over Christmas vacation and it all came back and more. And I saw your posts on Facebook. I've been following you for years and I was talking to my girlfriend who I work out with every day and I said, let's try this. It sounds really cool and maybe it'll work and it's something new because everything I've been trying is not working. So that's awesome. what made me jump in and, and your smiling face. Ah, well, there you go. Well, it was perfect. And yes, I too was a big, you know, I lost uh, weight, you know, with Weight Watchers many times uh, with Weight Watchers. And, Me too. <laughs> and when I put on my weight this last time, you know, which hadn't been for, you know, almost 13 years, I hadn't put on weight. I just knew I couldn't go back to that anymore. It just wasn't, you know, didn't fit with my lifestyle. So intermittent fasting has been such a, a wonderful, uh, exciting, you know, change. And I know for you as well, you know, having, you know, change things up a little bit has made a big difference. So tell us, I mean, right now, so far, what have you, you joined in January. So now we've been, you've been doing this now for almost nine, eight, nine months. Is that right? I guess that's correct. So mm -hmm. what have your results been so far? Yeah. You know, I always say nobody has to share pounds or inches if they don't want to, but you know, just in general, I know that you've had lots of success um, in many, many ways. Yeah, so I'm happy to share. So I would say I came into this hoping to lose 15 or 20 pounds. I didn't have a huge amount to lose, but certainly enough. And on a small frame, 20 pounds makes a big difference. Um, to date, I have lost 12 pounds, which does not sound like a lot and did not meet my goal. But I have dropped two sizes, which the last time I was this weight, I was a bigger size. And that whole um, magic, I call it the magic of the fast, the magic that is happening while fasting, my body has completely changed. So um, again, I've lost 12 pounds, I've dropped from a size 10 to a size six. And um, I would say a tight size six. Some sixes fit, some don't, you know, this crazy sizing they do right now. But I'm shopping in my own closet like I haven't shopped in 12 years. Um, and so that is amazing. I love I've that. also had non scale victories. I don't know if you want to hear about those. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I want so to hear about. Non yes. Okay. So, um, I was a slow loser, <laughs> I'll call it. Um, as you know, and thank God for your support, I did not lose a single pound for 12 or 13 weeks. At this point, I don't even remember. But I was not going anywhere. And thanks to you, I had taken my measurements at the beginning, and that was a huge, um, a huge thing to do. Because the one thing that I have realized over the last nine months that I had not realized over the last 49 years is the scale is just one piece of data. And I don't even really believe in it anymore, although I am still weighing daily more from a curiosity standpoint. I still have a few more pounds I think I want to lose. But if my body keeps changing, but the pounds don't go down, I'm totally fine with that now. Like I don't really care what the number on the scale says. 
And Melissa, let me stop you for a quick second. Losing weight on the scale, other things were happening. No, but you know, you're just saying that, you know, that must be very freeing too for somebody where the scale kind of, you know, determined what you were doing and how you were feeling to now realize that I agree the scale is a moment in time, you know, that's what it's good for, but to these other changes, the sizes, the changes in your body. So yes. All right. Sorry. Go on. No, a hundred percent. Um, I, I started noticing it first because my watch kept turning around on my wrist. I remember you and telling this was me a, that. <laughs> this was a watch that I got for my 40th birthday and I'm 49 now. So I've been wearing this watch for nine, nine years. It has always fit snug on my wrist. It has never spun. And even though literally the scale did not budge one pound, all of a sudden my watch was spinning around. and my pants were feeling looser and I've had chronic knee problems for years and I wasn't having the pain in my knee while exercising anymore. And I remember um, hearing from you and reading other stuff online that one of the first things that intermittent fasting can do is reduce inflammation. Mm -hmm. And a hundred percent that happened with me. A hundred percent. Like I didn't feel bloated or stuffed anymore, if that makes sense. And so, you know, you use the word non-scale victory before, and that's, I mean, not having the inflammation, I mean, is huge, you know, and we're going to get into in a little bit, you know, I know your exercise is pretty rigorous, and, but in general for anybody to, you know, who suffers from any kind of inflammation to have that as a bonus, even if you never lost an ounce, right, but just to have that, especially you say right. you're 49, my, myself as well, right, so, it, you know, inflammation from here on out for most people only gets worse, so if we've got something, you know, in that's so easy to combat this, as well as help us, you know, you know, look our best and feel our best, it's, it's just truly amazing, so that's awesome, do you have any other, yeah. victories, any, anything else you wanted to say, other um, victories that you wanted to talk about? I mean, just another weird one, like I've always had this ganglion cyst right here that I've had to have removed every four months, they drain it, it's gone. Like it is virtually gone. And so again, all the stuff I've been reading and I've learned from you, the body really has time now because it's not busy digesting food to heal itself from the inside. And and my knee issues and the inflammation and my cyst, like I, I Again, I literally have a four-month appointment standing with the surgeon that I have not seen him in seven months. Wow. Wow. That's just awesome. See, I didn't even know that. So that's fantastic. Yes. Awesome. I'm loving doing these interviews. You know, I don't get, you know, we all talk online, but when you get to talk to people, I get to hear some things I didn't know. So that's fantastic. So I want you to think back nine months ago when you were just first starting. What was something that you thought would be hard or actually was hard that, you know, and how do you feel about that now? So, um, I definitely thought that skipping breakfast was going to be hard. I work out every morning, not rigorously uh, this working out, but like a 30 minute workout with my neighbor every morning. She shows up at my house, it's pretty, we work out. And after my workout, I would take a shower and I would usually have like a protein shake or something for breakfast because I was hungry from my work. Workout. I was never like, oh my God, I have to work, eat before I work out because I was working out so early. But I definitely always ate after I worked out. The other thing that was terrifying to give up was my coffee. It was, it's like my, my pleasure. It's like my addiction. I just love to sit while the house is still quiet. The kids have left. I work from home a lot. So before I kind of you know, pull up my work day, I sit and I enjoy my cup of coffee with skim milk and Truvia and um, have never <laughs> thought I would um, ever drink black coffee. So I was looking for alternatives because I never thought I would go that route. So those were the two things that I was most anxious about. Um, the breakfast part, I was able to um, you know, push that off a bit. So again, at night, I was closing my window, you know, having dinner with my kids and my husband until eight o'clock at night. And so I would do my workout, I would shower, um, 
I would have a cup of tea, which was not satisfying. <laughs> and I would try, it would actually, I started getting online for work earlier so I could just kind of get in into my work day and distract myself from breakfast. Oh, that's a good um, idea. I don't need to do that anymore. I don't even think about breakfast, but it just to distract myself. So now, I love black coffee. I, I totally bit the bullet and everybody said it takes time to keep trying. It was so gross. I'm a little more snobby about my coffee. Like a really <laughs> good coffee is much better black than okay coffee. <laughs> so, um, but now I even drink, I used to drink black coffee to just get through the morning and then I would break my fast with real coffee. But now I even have black coffee when my window's open. Like I don't even go to the creamer and sugar and anything. Maybe sometimes as like a sweet treat. Now it tastes like hot chocolate, I think, if I put anything in it. Wow, that's, and that's huge. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker. I never have been. That's just one bad habit I never picked up. Or So, and, you know, when I hear people, I know what it's like. That's like everybody's thing is don't take away my coffee. And, you know, I would say 99.9% .9 of the people who I, you know, speak to who go through this program feel like you and are surprised that they can make that transition. And because, because black coffee itself does have some good benefits. Uh, so it's not all bad, but it's when you put the creams and the sugars yeah. and the sweeteners and all that, that, that junks it all up. So that's awesome. So you mentioned there um, about uh, your window or something like that with your family. You know, you eat and then you try to, so tell us a little bit about your fasting schedule in general, like your typical day. Now I know that you tend to do some longer fasts, but you know, just kind of give us a general overview of what you do and then tell us some of the ex extra things you do just because there are people out there who, you know, I want everybody to know people's journey. Okay. Yep. So as, as I said earlier, I was not losing weight. I was doing consistently 16 hours. I was watching the clock to get 16 hours to have my real coffee. Um, so that's how I started. And that was for three months. And my body started to just get it. Like I wasn't even craving anything before for 16, 17 hours. So I didn't feel that that transition was that hard. Um, so that was probably through March, April. You and I talked at that time. I read more. I was really trying to see movement on the scale. And so I did try to extend my fast a little longer, you know, shooting for like an 18-6 schedule. So one thing that I would say all along, and this might defy what I'm supposed to be doing, but it doesn't matter because it's working, is that I focus more on the time of the fast, not the time of the window. So yes, there are days that I will do an extended fast and have a 20 hour fast because I happen to shut my window at four or five o'clock the day before because I was carpooling into the middle of the night with football and lacrosse and whatever else. And then I opened my window and all of a sudden with work calls, I was at 22 hours. But that doesn't mean that my window is now two hours. I might then eat for the next six hours and then close my window and start the counting of the fast again. So for me, the day is not a 24 hour you know, block of time. It can't be, my window moves every single day. Some days it's 16. Some days it's 22. Um, I would say on average, I'm around 19 to 20 these days, but it's not because I'm staring at the clock. It's because I'm like, oh my God, I, it's 19 and a half hours. I should probably eat. But I really now am so much more in tune and listening to my hunger signs as opposed to looking at the clock and saying, it's time to eat. I so I love that I and I I am the same way it's I think intermittent fasting for me is very time fluid and so exactly it's not here's 24 hours I've only eaten here you know it's 20 hour fast and now I've only got to eat four hours I, I'm the exact same way and I think when you get into this rhythm and it starts to really flow and make sense um, you know like you said some days so just happens to be I have been I am Am I still frozen? Am I coming back? 
Yeah, you're coming back. Okay, sorry. Yeah, a little technical difficulties. But you know, there are those days when you, uh, when I, you know, too, you know, like I've, I've, it's 20 hours have just all of a sudden happened to me. And I didn't mean for it to happen. Um, and so, you know, if that happens and it's, you know, eight o'clock at night, then I may not eat, in, you know, till, you know, two in the morning. That day may only be a couple hours. But if it happens earlier in the day, you know, that it's been 20 because I stopped like you earlier in the day and it's now, you know, five o'clock, then sure, I may eat for the next five, six, seven hours. So I love that. Um, and I love more, you know, I, you've said exactly what I love to hear and that you're listening to your body. You're, you know, you're listening to your hunger symbols. And that's one of the three parts of my program. So, and in the book too, what I teach. So, yeah, you said all that and we didn't even plan it. Fantastic. No, and I, it's, funny, it's funny because I was reading the book on the beach yesterday because I'm mm -hmm. off on vacation right now. And I was thinking in my life, I have never listened to my body to tell me when it's hungry for 49 years or at least 39 years, you know, since I've started caring about food. My family is focused on the next meal. When are we eating? What are we eating? What can we have now? And since I have kind of battled and I've done Weight Watchers my whole life, it's always been an accounting, right? Okay, we're going to have pasta for dinner, so I'm going to have to have a salad and grilled chicken for lunch. And, you know, it's always been that um, kind of negotiation within my own planning. I've never said to myself, I'm not really even hungry for lunch. Like, I don't even need to eat right now, or maybe I'll just have, you know, my avocado toast that I'm obsessed with and I don't need to have a full turkey sandwich or whatever. So this is life changing for me because I have never been so in tune with my body, which feels really sad to say 49 years. In. It is, but you know, you learn the lesson and that's the, the important thing, you know, for sure. Um, so awesome. So tell us a little bit more. You're telling us a few little things that you eat. So tell us, you know, what, just a typical day. I, I know you love your avocado toast. So what, tell us what a typical day for you looks like in terms of eating. Yeah, so again, depending on when I closed my window the night before, it could be two o'clock, it could be four o'clock. Um, that I am breaking my fast. I almost daily, as long as I have a ripe half of an avocado, do break my fast with avocado toast, some, some sort of yummy, delicious, non, non fat, non low fat bread. There's so many delicious breads out there. I was so focused on Arnold's flatbread, 100 <laughs> calorie, ridiculous. Now I won't even think of putting that in my body. I don't count the calories. I just get a delicious piece of bread or two and I spread out my avocado and I put on everything but the bagel spice or some truffle oil. Or sometimes if I'm actually a little more hungry, I might make a sunny side up egg and throw it on there too. Um, then it kind of depends on what time it is. If I'll eat more, um, I'm a big nut eater. I do think the other thing is my body is craving more healthy fats and protein than ever before. So I love almonds or cashews or pistachios. Pistachios are good because I buy them in the shell. So it, I eat them slower because I have to work for them. Um, That's and then if my family is if we're having a family dinner, if we can sneak it in, I have two teen boys that are immersed in sports. Um, I'll eat dinner with my family and for years doing Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig and every other diet under the sun, I would always eat separately or prepare a different meal. They would be having pasta and meatballs and I would have, you know, grilled vegetables and eat three of the meatballs. Um, now, whatever we make for our family dinner, I get to eat and enjoy. I don't count anything. That is the most freeing thing. I don't count calories. I don't pack points. Nothing against any of those diets. They worked for a long time for me. But I like food too much. And I would always cheat the system. You know, I'd be like, well, I exercise today, so I'm not going to count those two extra meatballs or whatever. And then I have a big sweet tooth. So I am always closing with something if I'm feeling a little, you know, tighter and good about, you know, trying to stay on track. I'll have a piece or two of dark chocolate or 
one cookie. Um, but I'm here on Cape Cod right now, the capital of ice cream. So I've been having ice cream and waffle cones and hot fudge sundaes and doing it all. I will tell you the one thing that I have learned also is that if I close my window with a lot of carbohydrates, the fast is harder. I kind of white knuckle through the fast. So, or I'll break it early. I won't, I don't even say I white knuckle it, but like if I'm trying, sometimes it's even hard to get to 16, which is shocking to me when some days I get to 20 and I haven't even blinked an eye. I think that's also really important. Like I'm realizing what effect certain foods has on my body. So I try to close, even if it's just like a quick handful of nuts at the end of the day, because I know that that's going to sustain me more than three cookies. And, and that's exactly, and that's I 100% agree with 100, 100% agree. Like you say, sometimes when, you know, we've had pizza for dinner and it's 10 o'clock at night, so there's nothing else. And, and then the next thing I know it's 14 hours the next day and I'm looking at the clock, right? But then the nights that I have a great, you know, fish with quinoa and, you know, avocado and a whole, you know, like, you know, like you said, some nuts or some, it's the next thing, you know, it's like 23 hours. I'm like, Oh shoot, I, I got to eat. It's, it's amazing. And the other thing that you said that I think for me, that's, you know, the freedom among anything is, you know, I too, you know, I was a Weight Watchers leader for many, many years. So points were, were my life. And um, so to not have to count points, not have to count calories, not have to weigh, measure. And like you said, all that thinking and, and the negotiating with yourself. I mean, that is so emotionally draining and time consuming. And it shouldn't be that way, right? Like you said, we like food. It's it should be just a part of what we do and integrate it into our life and enjoy it when we do it. And we just do it within a short period of time. So, and whatever that is for that day. So um, what was I wanted to ask you with here also? So let's talk about exercise for a moment. Cause I want, you have a great exercise story out of all my ladies, you have a fantastic exercise story. So tell everybody what you do and you know, just tell your stuff. Okay. So I obviously started intermittent fasting in January. So my winter exercise regimen is made up of usually skiing on the weekends. And as I mentioned earlier, I have a very close friend. She's my across the street neighbor. And for three years now, we've been accountability partners. She shows up at my front door and we work out in the morning. We use on-demand videos in my living room. And so... Um, it was great because when I started fasting, the skiing made it really easy. I would have my coffee in the morning and then I would go out for skiing. And then by the time it was time to break for lunch, it was time to eat. And I was nervous. Would I have the energy to ski or how would I feel? And I was pretty surprised at that point that I didn't feel any tiredness or anything. But whatever, I don't think of skiing as a very rigorous exercise. And my morning 30 minutes could be Pilates, it could be weight training, it could be cardio, but I never ate before that anyway. So that was pretty regular. When the spring came and I was already four months into the fasting is when I started my outdoor cycling. Um, I train every year for a almost 200 mile uh, two day charity bike ride. And so the training in, you know, April, May is, is lighter mileage. But as the summer goes on, obviously, I have to step up the mileage and the time. And I'm almost always riding in the morning. So I started to toy with training fasted. And so I would go out for a 20-mile ride. And for those of you who think that's crazy, that's only about an hour and 20 minutes or so. So if you go to the gym or you spend an hour and a half on a hike, it's the same. Um, and I would be fasted and I would only have water in my water bottles instead of the good old Gatorade I used to always ride with. Um, and then um, as the mileage started creeping up, I started just testing it. I would have a granola bar with me. I would have nuts with me. I would always carry food just in case I didn't feel good. But I couldn't believe I actually felt stronger and had more energy um, as I was riding, even long distances, you know, I would get back from a 30 mile bike ride and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't need to eat. Now, the one thing I will tell you with more rigorous exercise that has really helped me as I've amped up the mileage 
is I do sometimes suck on pink Himalayan salt. Mm -hmm. And that's really to replace the electrolytes. Um, salt is okay during the fast. It doesn't break the fast. And the Himalayan salt has some special minerals in it. So as opposed to just like regular table salts or even kosher salt, the pink Himalayan salt really hit the nail with me. So I actually just take a couple crystals. I put them in the back pocket of my riding jersey and I, I suck on them. It gives me a, a nice like salty flavor. And on the one day that I did a 50 mile ride without the salt, I really was dragging. And I know it wasn't because I lacked the energy. I had plenty of fat stores to get me through that ride, but it was the electrolytes that um, had really drained and I didn't have any way to replace them with just the water. So I got up, sorry, go ahead. So yeah, so I had never, that's a fantastic suggestion. I had never heard that. Um, and so I'm gonna put, file that one away and share that one. And, and that's, that is just fantastic. All right, sorry, I just, that was, uh, I want people to note that. And that's what I really love is as people get into this, that first 28 days of my program is just a beginner's program. It's your jump start. It's to kind of make the mental shifts. But then it's for those people like you who then take it and what you make it of your own and, you know, um, fit it into your life and how you can make it work. So that is fantastic. Um, did you have more to say about that exercise and so forth? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I still can't, can't believe that my body has the ability to perform at such a high level. I mean, we're talking about four or five, six hours cycling on a bike without any food in my body and that I actually have felt stronger. And I was actually reading the chapter in um, your new book about the human growth hormone. And, you know, I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever, before. Um, now that I've experienced myself and I've read it in your book, it, it, it truly makes sense because my body is, again, I've talked about the recomposition. I haven't lost that much weight, but my body composition has changed. And the strength that I have felt, th that can be the only reason is that I'm producing more human growth hormone. And so I'm stronger and I don't, I have, you know, last year's Thanksgiving dinner as energy. I don't need a granola bar <laughs> or a shake to get me through um, my, my bike ride. So the, the, I will just tell you the quick punchline. I got to the weekend of the 200 mile ride and I said to myself, if I fast, I fast. If I don't, I don't. I'm riding 200 miles. It doesn't matter what I eat. I'm not going to gain weight. I'm just going to enjoy the weekend. And even though my entire training regimen, I had mostly done every ride fasted, it was, we leave at 5.30 in the morning on Saturday. By 8.30, you know, they have all these goodies out at all the rest stops. I'm like chowing down, whatever. I did not feel good that day. My stomach was sour. I, I mean, I probably broke my fast 30, 25, 30 miles into the ride as opposed to, you know, I had done a 70 mile fasted ride earlier in my training season. I did not feel good because I had all of a sudden, like I was digesting instead of just using, you know, the strength and the energy that I had in my body. And so day two came, and I fasted through the first 60 miles and then really just had nuts and a little fruit to get me to the end, which was just 85 miles the second day. I don't mean to adjust, I know it's a lot. Um, and then I enjoyed, and I had my mud slide and my you know, lobster roll and my french fries and everything that I wanted to have. Um, but my body really became accustomed to not wanting to eat while exercising. Yeah, our, our bodies will tell us. And I, and I, so I say, and what I've always taught is that thing, just listening to your body. I mean, if we just do that, we never have to like think about it because, but it is also interesting how we also sort of go back to kind of old thinking, right? Well, I'm going on this long ride and I probably should eat something, right? I mean, I'm the same way. Something will come up. I'm like, you know, it's like that old thing because, oh, but it's going to be a long time. And, and really um, it's that's, you know, every single time we do that and then we don't feel good, it's just one more, I always say, it's one more validation of intermittent fasting, one more validation that we can do things on a fasted, um, you know, stomach. So we're getting to, I know I gotta get, you gotta get back to work, so we're just gonna uh, wrap this up in just a moment. But in general, um, how do you feel like the Melt the Midlife Middle program, especially those in the beginning? How do you feel like that really set the groundwork for where you're at now um, in general? 
So I have to say, it just for me, it came at the perfect time. Like you posted, we've been friends on Facebook for years. I saw it. I jumped in. Um, the first month, the first 28 days were great. You had these questions of the day and affirmations of the day. And um, I'm a Facebook user and I loved that. You were also there for lots of questions. You had great videos with the science. I, I am really interested in the science and how it works, even though I'm not a science person. And you gave just enough to make it make sense, but not go too sciencey that I was gonna, you know, collapse. And then I did jump into the follow-up 90-day program because I was feeling good, even though, again, after 28 days, I had not lost one pound. I had not lost a half a pound, um, but I felt better. My body felt better. I felt like this was something I could sustain. Um, and then even, you know, your support and the, the phone calls that we had and the email exchanges and... You know, I also did some additional research and some additional reading besides your books, which I think you actually referenced in your books, a couple of the other books that you recommended. And that really helped me realize that this is not a, like, I'm not starting and the journey is going to be over when I lose this next five pounds. Like, this is how I will live for the rest of my life. And I can't even imagine going back. I can't like I, I and I talked to everybody about it. You know, I've introduced a couple friends, my sister, one of my best friends, again, like you, a Weight Watchers leader. She's um, lost 30 or 40 pounds. I mean, you have changed our lives. So if anybody is out there thinking about it, read Jill's book, jump into her program. It is, it, there's, you have nothing to lose except your waistline. Honestly, I know I feel like a cheesy commercial, but it's life-changing, life-changing. That's awesome, awesome. So that was gonna be my next question. When my last question was your confidence doing this for the rest of your life. But I think that's, you know, I think you two are an IF lifer um, and will never go back. So um, is there anything else you wanna share before I wrap this up? The only thing that I would share is that how people start to socialize it with friends and family. Um, I've definitely had a lot of questions and was probably a little more subtle about it early on when I was learning. Um, I didn't feel confident about explaining the science, or why I was doing it. I have an 18 year old niece who said to me, that sounds like an eating disorder. You're not eating, you're not eating enough. And after I talked to her and I explained to her the science and um, you know, I explained to her again, I am not restricting my calories within my window. This is really just a when you eat program, not a what you eat program. Um, and so certainly I do think you have better, faster results if you tighten maybe your carbs up or, you know, you don't have as much alcohol or, you know, but I have not you know, restricted much at all, and I'm still having tremendous success. Um, and so just, you know, use Jill's guidance, learn the science a little bit. Now my kids are so great. They're like, mom, can you taste this? Or are you, is, is your window closed? <laughs> you know, that's the language we use in my house now. It's like, oh, mom's window's open, mom's window's closed. Um, and they're so respectful of it. My husband has jumped on board. He toying with it, doing 16, eight and having great success. Um, so that's the only thing I would say is build your confidence before you start to get excited about spreading the word because people are definitely resistant. Um, and even though it's catching on more mainstream, it takes people a couple times really hear it before they're willing to buy in and judgment's hard you know I always joke that nobody cared when I gained 20 pounds and, and was worried about my health then um, but you know they're all worried that I'm starving myself which I assure you I am not starving and, and that is it I mean I've, more, more people say oh you shouldn't lose anymore you shouldn't lose it and I am the healthiest I have ever been at 49 years old in body, mind, and spirit. Um, and so I agree, and, and especially about that, you know, keeping it not, you know, just close at heart before you kind of spread it out there to everybody because um, 
you know, there's a lot of naysayers out there, a lot of misinformation, a lot of people who, even like myself, when I started a health coach for, you know, 15 years, and of course, breakfast was the most important meal of the day. So this was a big, you know, change for me too. And um, so find, you know, finding a supportive environment, either, you know, with my program or some other, you know, way, I think is vital in the beginning. So, well, thank you so much, Melissa, for being on here today and sharing with everybody. And I just love your story because it is a story to me, you know, a lot of people will lose weight that first month or, you know, the first couple of months, but to not lose really anything for, what was it you say, almost 12 weeks? Three, yeah, three months. Almost 12 weeks and, and, and yet stick with it. Um, and you, you know, you know, like you said, you're, you're telling it, you know, you've got your sister, you've got her on board, your friends on board. And I think having that support system around you, whether it's online, offline, you know, has also been key for for you, um, because you get to kind of be like the teacher a little bit and it kind of, um, you know, since you like to do the research. So, well, thank you again so much. And I will definitely see you online and you're looking fabulous at 49. We, we are looking good, girl. <laughs> All those years ago, right? High school, and I keep saying, I feel, I look and feel better than I did even, you know, way back then. So, thank you again. Have a great day. I'm gonna fit into that. I'm going to fit into that prom dress soon, and you and I can out, go out on the town. I love it. I love my prom dress. That sounds good. All right. Well, wonderful. Enjoy the cake, and um, I will talk too. to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Mwah. Mwah. All right.